sailors welcome back to cruising as crew um so this video is a little bit impromptu i it's embarkation day here on the valiant lady on virgin voyages and i have just finished doing embarkation do em, embarkation duty um where i basically greet new sailors that come on board uh, say hello answer questions and it occurred to me that so many of our new sailors have no idea what to do when they first get on board. In this video, I am going to talk you through the embarkation day process if you are a sailor. So, so if you are planning to holiday with us, come on a Virgin Voyages ship, whether it be Scarlet, Valiant or Resilient in the future, then I'm basically going to talk you through the embarkation process. So you know what's going on. So it all starts with booking your cruise. Now after booking your cruise, you're obviously gonna get confirmation emails, etc. And in that confirmation email, you are going to be given an embarkation time. So embarkation starts at 1.30 p.m. if everything goes according to plan. So your embarkation time, the earliest will be 1.30 and the latest will probably be maybe 3 30 4 o'clock but basically everyone's gonna have an embarkation time and this is so you can avoid queuing no one likes to queue no one likes to wait so the idea is that you turn up basically at your embarkation time and you can just get straight on as opposed to turning up at 9 a.m waiting around until like 3 in the afternoon so if your embarkation time is 1 30 get there for 1.30 or 1.15. If your embarkation time is 3.30, get there for 3.15. There's no point being there any earlier because you are not gonna be able to get on any earlier than your embarkation time. So when you get to the port, you're gonna obviously drop your bags, check your bags in, and they are gonna be taken on the ship for you, and they will be at your cabin when you get on board. As we just went through the timings, you're going to wait for your time, hopefully not too long. So let's say your time to get on board is 1.30. It gets to 1.30. You are going to be called to go through security where you're going to have to put all your hand luggage, your coats, everything through a scanner. You're going to have to walk through a scanner and be checked to make sure you're not bringing anything unwanted on board. So you're going to go to the check-in desks where you will be guided to and you are going to have to hand over your COVID test records, your passport and your booking confirmation. You're going to have your photo taken for your app and for security purposes. And then you are going to be given a little bracelet. So like other cruises, you would be given your card, but on Virgin, you are given a bracelet with a little tab on. And from there, you are going to make your way to the ship. So you are either going to walk onto the ship or you're gonna catch a bus to the ship, depending on what port you are embarking in. So getting on the ship, you're gonna tap your wearable into security. So our system registers that you are now on board the ship. And then your cruise starts, your holiday can officially begin. But this is where people get a bit lost. So what? I've witnessed sailors do is quite rightly you think right we've got hand luggage so let's go and find our cabin and drop our cases or bags in the cabin and then they're hungry so they're like okay let's go to the galley or one of the restaurants and have some lunch and they think about like oh where are we going to go for dinner maybe let's try and get a reservation however things book up really quickly within the virgin restaurants so to everyone watching this video who is coming on to one of our ships my recommendation to you is as soon as you tap your wristband and you get on one of our ships, you're going to go straight to deck seven to the red table. It's a big red table. You cannot miss it. And to the right of that, there is a dining reservations section. Now, the theory is that you will be able to book all of these restaurants using the app. However, to everyone who has cruised with us, you will know that we have experienced some difficulties with the app. So basically, to save any frustrations, what I would recommend to you is go to that area of the ship first with your bags, the dining and reservation section, because the longer you leave it, the longer the queue is going to be. So just go straight there and basically ask them to confirm that they have all of the bookings that you made through the app, if you did. And if you didn't, then what I would say is book 
all the restaurants for the whole cruise as soon as you get on board just so you know that you have got a reservation because there's nothing worse than like if you go on one of these ships and for example you really want to go to gun bay and they get fully booked really fast so you don't get the opportunity to go so as soon as you get on board you're going to go to deck seven to the dining section and you are going to book all of your restaurants and I definitely recommend going to Pink Agave and Extra Virgin. So Pink Agave is Mexican cuisine and Extra Virgin is Italian. And they are my personal favourites. So I definitely recommend giving them a go and wearing some elasticated trousers when you go. <laughs> the second thing that I would do is wheel your case over to the red table. And that is where you can book any spa treatments. You can book your shows. Once again, you sh theoretically should be able to book all of this through the app. So if you have done that, just go over to the red table and ensure that they have got your bookings. And if they haven't got them, then you can rebook them in person at the red table. So make sure you book to go and see Dual Reality and also the VHS workshop and also the Untitled Dance Party. Those are my three like must do's. Now you have got your restaurants booked and all your entertainment booked. You can now make your way to your cabin. So the way that the cabin numbers worked, my mom has just uh, cruised, she cruised last cruise, which was so nice to see her, and her cabin was 14030Z. So, 40, so the first number is the deck, so she was on deck 14, 030 is the cabin number, whether it is at the front, the middle, or the back of the ship, and then you can either have Z or A at the end of your cabin number. So Z is starboard side and A is port side. And the way I remember that is if you are facing the front of the ship, the word left is made up with four letters and the word port is made up with four letters. So port is the left side if you are facing the front of the ship, and then your right is starboard side. So as I said, right starboard z left port a so you are going to make your way to your cabin now the first thing that you're going to do when you get into your cabin is you're going to go oh my god because it's so amazing and you're probably going to jump on the bed definitely recommend doing that um, but after you have done all that you need to grab the ipad that is going to be on the desk in your room and it prompts you to watch the safety video so that is something that i would recommend doing in the cabin because later on you are going to have to attend a drill which we'll get into later and you can either watch the video in your cabin when you first get there or you can watch the video when you check into your muster station however if you wait to do it then because there's only a certain amount of iPads and there might be a lot of people waiting to watch the video you might end up having to wait around for an iPad so I would definitely recommend just pressing play on the iPad the video will appear on your TV and you can just sit down on your bed for 10 minutes and watch this safety video it's really fun it's really great so just give it a watch but I would definitely say do that in your cabin before you do anything else and then that is it till about 4.30 so you might unpack or you might want to go and sit on your balcony and check out the hammock or if you're hungry you might want to go up to the galley on deck 15 and just grab a snack or have some lunch or have a cup of tea whatever you want or you might just want to go around and explore the ship but at 4.30 the drill is going to start so on every cruise ship you go on before it sets sail you have to take part in a passenger drill so it basically ensures that every passenger every sailor knows what to do in the unlikely event of an emergency but the good thing about the drills on Virgin Voyages is there's a lot less waiting around there's a lot less faff so on the back of your cabin door, you will have a letter and the letters correspond to your muster station. So muster station A is in the red room. Now, if it's A6, you're going to go to the red room on deck six. If it's A7, you're going to go to the red room on deck seven. Muster station B is in the casino on deck six. And the way I remember that is B for bet. Muster station C. Now, you might be C6 or C7. And muster station C is the club. It's the manor. And that's how I remember it. C for club. 
Muster station D is for the sip lounge and you can remember that by D for drink and that is on deck seven and then you have muster station E now it could be E6 or E7 and E is for roundabout and the way I remember this is E for epicenter because the roundabout is the center of the ship it's like the, the equivalent to an atrium on any other cruise ship. Muster station F is for the test kitchen, which is on deck six. And the way I remember that is if you take a test, you might get an F. Muster station G is for the social club, which is on deck seven. And it also has all of the games. So G for games the social club. Muster station H is for dock house, which is deck seven at the back of the ship. H house, that's how I remember that. And then the last one is muster station I, which is for the wake, which is on deck seven at the very back of the ship. So like I said, make sure you look at the back of your cabin door to see which muster station you need to go to. So 4.30, you can start making your way to your muster station. Now, unlike other cruise ships where you're basically all told to go to your muster station at a certain time with your life jackets and then you're all crammed into this room waiting to be given an instructions. The nice thing about this is the drill on Virgin lasts for about an hour and a half so it's going to be 4 30 till 6 p.m roughly. So you can go to your muster station any time between that time okay so if you're if at 4 30 they make the announcement for drill but you're eating or having a cup of tea that's fine you can go at five go at 5 30 as long as you go before six o'clock that's fine so all you need to do is find your muster station and check your wristband in with one of the people holding a tablet and they're going to direct you to a crew member who has a life jacket so this is where if you haven't watched your safety video in the cabin you're gonna have to watch it at the muster station um, but if you have watched it in your cabin, it'll come up on our tablet when you scan in that you've watched it. So then we will just direct you to a crew member who's going to give you a little life jacket demonstration. They're going to tell you where the medical center is, uh, various numbers that you need to call in the unlikely event of an emergency and answer any questions that you may have. And that talk lasts approximately five to 10 minutes and then you're free to go. So, like I said, unlike most drills on other ships that can last 15 minutes to half an hour, this is really quick, especially if you've already watched the safety video in your cabin. And then that's it. And once everyone has checked in, that means that the ship can then set sail and we can start cruising. During this time that people are filtering to their muster stations, they're going to do an announcement and they're going to sound the alarm, which is seven short and one long, just so you know what it sounds like. So if at any point during the cruise you do hear the seven short, one long alarm, you know that you need to make your way to your muster station, which is where you checked in on embarkation day. So I hope that will make sense. But if you still have questions about the drill or anything that I've mentioned so far, please leave them down in the comments and I will definitely get back to you. But after drill, that's pretty much it. I mean, you can go to your cabin and get ready for dinner or get ready for a show that you've booked or whatever you want to do. But something I would recommend getting your hands on is a paper copy of the, the planners. The app will absolutely tell you everything that's going on. So if you prefer to look at it on your phone, you can do. Or if you do want a paper copy, then these are available as well. So you have all the bar opening times, all the eatery opening times, the galley opening times and all of the eateries within the galley. You've also got a breakdown of the voyage that you are doing. Okay, and then a few of the highlight events on the bottom right. And then if we turn this over, you've basically got everything that's going on around the ship listed here. So whether you want music, parties and shows, or you want to know what the happenings are doing, you've got everything here. And you've even got the locations of all of the eateries and the names of them. But that is basically a breakdown of Embarkation Day for Virgin Voyages, because I know Embarkation Day can be really stressful. So hopefully by watching this and knowing what to expect and also having an idea of what to do when you get on board, Hopefully that will take all the stress out of it 
and you'll be like, I know what I'm doing. I am in control. Um, and it hopefully it will make your vacation even more enjoyable. But yeah, I hope you have enjoyed that. And I really hope you find it helpful. And if you are coming to sail on Valiant and you have watched this, then please come and say hello. I work in the sunglasses shop. Or if you're going on Scarlet and Resilient, I won't be there, but I hope you have a wonderful time. But yeah, thank you so much for being here. And I will see you in the next video, guys. Bye.